Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish here with my friend Mir One at Anarchapulco. And I got to say, just as a way of introduction, on Instagram, yes, I'm on Instagram, I have alerts set up for my family members. So when my family members post, I get it, I get it like a text message. There are also three artists that I include in that priority for me that I want to be connected with because their art enriches my life. And Mir One is one of them, and he is at Mir m-e-a-r underscore one on instagram please follow him set up alerts the other one is art of jph who happens to be right there behind us and he happens to be painting what painting me at the moment which is which is like this is like an inception interview right here <laughs> so we're gonna get him next on camera but um mere one uh, you know he was here last year uh and so is so is jph and he was doing these these, these amazing murals um and, and what I was able to get is a sense that there's, a, there's an immense amount of, uh, of passion in your art. Like, it's not just beautiful. It's not just, I got a message. But, like, there, there's a sense of something deeper that comes through in that. Yeah. And as I'm inviting everybody here to bring something into the conversation that we don't normally talk about, you know, I, I challenged Mir with this. And, and, and I know this isn't totally out of the conversation for him. In fact, it's, it's one of the things that I think he really brings into this conversation that is a good contribution because he's an anarchist and he's concerned about the environment. And one of his paintings that was really touching to me is Garbage Island. And it's uh, just stunning in, in, the, in the power of it. And you can tell that there's that not emotion, not thought, but there really is a, you know, a spirituality, a passion, and activism behind your art. So if you could tell us, like, what, is, what is this concern? Why is this something that you think is a priority? And, and how would you invite I mean, people in, this, in the anarchist community to, to maybe think about it differently? Yeah, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I was, I'm always putting like chemtrails and stuff in my art, and I'm describing things that exist in our world that we're unaware of. And there's just so much of it that's geared towards harming us. Um, the new cellular technology they're installing, which is super high powered, um, to our gas meters, um, to our smart refrigerators and all of this stuff that are sending out pulses. Who knows what it's really doing to our DNA and what, what's, um, what's, what's, what it's doing to the world around us, the, the bees, the birds, these animals that help our food system grow. And, um, you know, it got me thinking recently even to a deeper level of how am I contributing to this problem and um, got me thinking about things just as simple as when I go out and purchase some food to take home because I want to eat, I'm busy working, I'm buying stuff that's in styrofoam. It's not even good for me, but uh, I'm just throwing it away. And, um, you know, I could be taking a Pyrex bowl and offering this restaurant an opportunity to save cost for them, save the planet, and, and, and things like that, you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm going around, I'm seeing everywhere, you know, cigarette butts on the ground still, I'm seeing, um, I live in Los Angeles in Hollywood, you know, home of smog and cars, and, you know, my house is always getting full of particulate matter, I wipe it down, we clean it up. Well, you called it dust, but it's not really like the way we think of dust as a natural phenomenon. Yeah, it's like a freeway, re freeway regrind or something. It's like tire. It's, it's combustion. It's, it is so much. It's death. It's just blowing death. And, uh, you know. When I, when I lived in L.A., I wasn't that close to downtown. I was, I was even closer. I was, I was only a few miles from the ocean on the, on the Santa Monica site, still in L.A. city limits. But it was just, it was gross. I mean, I, I, when you don't even, you really can't, you live in a, a cloud of smog, dust. Well, like, I would go hose down my house, and it's like black streaks, because you don't even know that there's a gray film on it. And it's like, I, you know, when you stop and, and think about it sometimes, you know, I'm very fortunate to live now in Arizona where I'm out of the way, and I'm really in touch with nature there, and I'm, you know, surrounded by it. Yeah. Nobody else's garbage is, is going to bother me. But in L.A., like you said, you have trash blowing around, and I'm a part of me like it, it wants to. Just, how do we put up with this? You know, I mean, I was in the Marines. My standards a little more anal than the average person. You know, we go and pick up every cigarette butt on base, police call, but even just like the basic, I mean, like you were saying, when you when you when you when you confront people about this, because you're not trying to confront them, but you can't raise it without without it 
without them taking it as a confrontation. And at its core, it has an undeniable nature uh, as a confrontation. Say, hey, let's let's maintain the value of this shared natural resource we call Earth. Totally. And it's like you know, wherever I go, I I, I went out to Hawaii recently for my first time, and I saw a place where very little trash existed, and I was blown away that this actually was still on our planet, that you could still go somewhere and see something. I painted a mural there. But everywhere you go, there's rivers that come out of the highlands, and at the bottom was it where they reach the, the ocean. There's just tons of just the filthiest, soupy, human garbage you could imagine. And uh, we all see it, and it's just uh, it's, it's us that's doing it to ourselves at this point. And, um, you know... As an artist, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to articulate what is, what is the underlying truth, what is the substructure beneath this theatrical environment taking place, and what are the, um, what are the fundamental uh, things that we're not paying attention to. So, you know, that's why, um, that's why I'm doing stuff like this, um, drawing attention to narratives, uh, important narratives that, that communicate, you know, consciousness to people. That's what's lacking, um, you know. You, you go and tell someone in a very polite way, hey, bro, I saw you just flick that cigarette into the uh, curb right there, and as soon as the wind blows or the, rain the, the rains come, it's going into our ocean, into a seagull or a turtle, and y you need them. You need them to live. We're not separate. We're all one. And... Um, you know, I mean, I don't get that deep of someone in the moment. I'd like to. I mean, when I... Hey, it, that cigarette butt. No, we're one. You can't do that. Right, right. No, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. We're quantumly <laughs> connected on a, on a, you know. But no, it's like, but, but before you can even get too deep of them, they're already cussing you out and, you know, telling you off and telling you you're self-righteous. They're ready to pick a fight. And, um, you know, it's just generally not cool to go up to someone and tell them this and you know so socially cool to go up and tell someone pick up your trash be responsible for your own stuff right. and um, that needs to change too where where everyone becomes aware of their connection and that's it's sad that you know history our current situation politics and just the human dilemma has got us to the point where we can't even communicate to, like we're a family, you know, like we're a species. We're so separated. Well, part of my, you know, how do I blame the government for this thinking <laughs> is, you know, when, when, you, when you talk to someone and, you, and you're trying to call them to account, like, hey, you just, you just flicked a cigarette on the ground, dude, I, I, I don't appreciate that. Yeah. You know, I mean, even as simple as that, you know, there is an inherent conflict. And I, and I think in the, in the mind of at least the average American, there is this thought, well, well, we pay for the government to take care of big problems. We don't have to worry about big problems. And, of course, my cigarette's nothing. Yeah. And, and I'd like to think that part of what the transition that we're going through now of, 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 of realizing freedom for humanity, one thing that libertarians don't talk about enough is that inherent to the right to self-ownership is the right to homestead, right? You have a right to homestead. You have a right to claim a part of the natural environment. You want to trash your own little corner of it that you're, where you're not affecting anybody else? Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you, I, I, I'm not a respect for your private property. You know, if you're like, if you're, if you're truly containing it, right? You're not affecting anybody else. But the thing that people don't talk about enough is that, if if you have a right to homestead, it means that it is inherent in your right as a human being to have an equitable access to natural resources. Yeah. And when when you trash something else, you're infringing on your rights. True. You know, and and that's something that I think. We're, we still need to develop the mechanisms and the culture of holding people accountable. Like, I don't want someone to get a $100 ticket for throwing a, a cigarette butt on the ground, but I kind of want that to go into their reputation capital accounting somehow. I want them, you know, to, to be accountable for that. What, what, is there something to that, or are we just going to have to wait? Is, 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 is a voluntary society, because you're an anarchist, you know, you, you, you have to have a free market solution to this, right? Even if that free market solution is, a spiritual awakening. That's definitely not a government solution. Yeah. But is there is there some mechanism, perhaps, that 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 you look forward to that you think would would help shift or hold individual polluters accountable? Well, definitely learning about how are they truly connected, because the systems lied to them for so long they can't even imagine that um, 
we're 99.9999999% empty space and everything else is too. They can't put that theoretical, uh, physical, scientific um, understanding to use for them. It doesn't work. It's like everything is solid. It's, it's, it's permanent, you know, until they're dead. <laughs> but, um, you know, and they, they, don't, they don't understand that there's, um, you know, that we have microsms inside of us and we're inside of a macrosm, which is inside of a greater one, inside of a great. So thinking these ideas is, 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 is natural, I think. And we're living in an unnatural state where thinking that way, you get criticized. You're, you're told that maybe, um, how can that make money? You're, you're useless to me, you know? And that's so sad. You know, I mean, I even take it to extremes sometimes. I like thinking a lot. <laughs> and um, one of them is like the idea that, boy, so everything that we have has been made for us to, to purchase from these, these makers who have been taking from the earth and it's not theirs to take. And this is like Native American knowledge right here and Tibetan and all the ancient cultures knew this, but you know, I, I think we hear that and it sounds like a fairy tale or a fantasy story to think of things in that way. Like, we live in such a materialistic reality that that is like threatening your family or threatening your paycheck to even think that way. And that's another layer of how sad it is that the human mind is being restricted from really going there. You know, um, what so, 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 Star Trek? Uh, oh my God, uh, Arthur C. Clarke was it, I think? Or was he the one that did 2001? Anyways, these great writers were allowed to let their minds think so far out that our, that our technology is trying to catch up with, the, with their minds right now. And, and, and none of these writers in their ideas of the future, did anyone have a job and was paying taxes and, yeah, right. you know, picking up, you know. Because we're all so prosperous and big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everyone was, like, self-accountable, responsible, reliable, and just amazing. And that's who we should be already, you know. We've had hundreds of years of literature and stories and thousands of years of stories and mythology that all, you know, point towards that hero, towards that divine, divine that, that, that deity, that, that, that one, that, 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 yeah, the unity and connection, you know, that all of these great stories all lead to at the end, these morals, you know, like the Odyssey or, you know, any of these, these stories. So, yeah, that's, that's where I've been taking my thoughts lately, thinking about materialism, thinking about responsibility with materialism, and, um, yeah. So it would be fair to say that we have to elevate the consciousness first yeah. to demand the mechanisms, if mechanisms are even needed at that point, to address what are really ultimately very petty I mean, environmental issues, I mean, right? We have, if, if we have to make demands because the consciousness isn't moving, if the consciousness moved there, I, I, it would just naturally occur because we would be so natural. We would be nature again, but highly advanced, you know, awoken, not just, you know, bumbling around, throwing stones at, you know, cavemen. <laughs> well, it's beautiful how all of what, all of what my friend Mir is saying here is incorporated into his artwork, and I, am, I hope you'll check it out at Mir underscore one, M-E-A-R. Tell people what, is, what does Mir stand for? It stands for Manifest Energy and Radiate. There you go. Mir one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, brother. Yes. All right. That was beautiful. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. 
Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.